as a public university, uh, UVA is ranked number two in the country, and more than 50% of the undergraduates take physics courses. And we offer students an education experience that emphasizes uh, critical thinking and also active learning. One of our great strengths at the university is a very strong student body. And they are smart kids, they get engaged in the classes, and we've reached out to them here as a physics department. So for example, my How Things Work class, which is physics in the context of everyday objects, has drawn in about 10,000 students since I started doing this. And at times, I've reached approximately 50% of the possible audience at the university. Well, the discovery of the Higgs boson, or a profound uh, discovery like this, comes along once every 50 or 100 years. The role of uh, myself and the team at the University of Virginia and the Higgs boson decay was to, uh, first of all, be a member of the analysis review committee that was responsible for releasing the Higgs discovery to the public in the middle of last summer. The second part was our work on the electromagnetic detector. The students uh, had an uh, absolutely unique experience. This doesn't come along very often in physics where you have such an opportunity to be on the ground floor of a profound discovery. I'm a condensed matter experimentalist. Uh, this is a very broad field and encompasses many different areas of research. I would say this is a field where discoveries in the lab can easily translate to new technologies. Jefferson Lab is a modern generation particle accelerator in which electrons are given very high energies to, to do uh, different types of nuclear physics experiments. In our case, we're quite interested in these things we call form factors. We have targets that are polarized. The electron beam is also polarized, and we scatter the electrons off of the targets, look at a particular direction, and we'll flip the electron spin back and forth, and look at the way the scattering changes. In, in some ways, I think that we're unfolding the structure of the nucleon at the beginning of the 21st century in much the same way as the structure of the atom was unfolded at the beginning of the 20th century. So in general I work in atomic molecular and optical physics which basically means we use laser light to interact with atoms and molecules and we are now at the point where we understand this so well in such depth that we can engineer the quantum mechanics to build new machines. Uh, one of these machines is a quantum computer. The really exciting thing about quantum computing as proposed by Feynman is that you could study much bigger systems and possibly find exact solutions for them. In my research what I'm doing is to use string theory techniques um, to address questions in particle physics. Uh, and what I'm especially interested in is um, the relationship um, that has been uncovered between gravity theories and gauge theories. Holography, which is the main direction of my research, is a statement about the mathematical equivalence of two very distinct looking like theories. One which is this gauge theory, similar to the strong interaction uh, theory or quantum chromodynamics, uh, and the other theory is the theory of gravity. I specialize in statistical mechanics, and statistical mechanics is the basic way we describe systems with lots of particles. And so we're not interested in uh, describing each particle individually. What you're interested in is what happens overall. And so what we look at here is try and find the common rules that underlie at least as much of these phenomena as you possibly can do. And sometimes it's good to just understand the rules, worry about what's mathematically consistent, and what kinds of theories can I even invent. One of the experiments I'm involved with, uh, the NOVA experiment, which is a neutrino experiment, it's being done at Fermilab, a particle accelerator outside of Chicago, and Minnesota. We're building a 15,000 ton plastic detector. It's the biggest plastic structure ever built, all glued together. And my group at the University of Virginia, we're building the system that powers all the electronics for the detector. We produce one type of neutrino at Fermilab, and then they try out the speed of light. We want to see if it turns into another type of neutrino. There's three of them. And so we have to build a detector far away to give them enough time to actually do this. 
And if they do, maybe that's the reason why we see this asymmetry between matter and antimatter. We're trying to develop uh, new materials that are useful in spintronic devices. One of the key devices is a new type of magnetic memory called magnetic random access memory, or MRAM. We have techniques here so we can make these uh, novel materials that can't be made by other, other means. And so we can make them. Uh, they're theoretically predicted. We try to make them. If we're successful, then we characterize them. My research is in the experimental subatomic physics, which encompasses nuclear and elementary particle physics. My studies focus on the nucleon and the mesons that are way stations along that way, uh, along the road to ever smaller uh, particles. So graduate students are absolutely crucial. They're essential. They are the, the, the life and blood of the research effort in the university. Students are very important in my lab because they're involved in all different facets of the work. And a lot of times students have this you know, uh, unique perspective because they come in the field brand new and they can sometimes ask questions that you haven't thought of. So this often leads to new results that, we, that are always very welcoming because it's something you haven't thought of. I love teaching. I teach first years, you know, advanced grad students that do the whole spectrum. And it's fun because it's part of my job to, to teach. The physics department is small, but we do have a diverse group of people. We do have diverse capabilities. We do collaborate amongst each other. We are very close to national facilities that we make use of. I think for the research purpose, that's fantastic. Our students are very engaged in research. This is very important for a research university. Both undergraduates and graduate students are fully engaged. This is our future. I think as an investment to the future, we have to focus on them. I feel very fortunate to be here.